This is Luzlo's 64-bit operating system for the IBM PC that's free and open source. It's designed for recreational programming. Uh, I wrote this over the past seven years full-time and I did a compiler, an assembler, an editor, a graphics library, and uh, it's all 64-bit and it's all seamlessly integrated together. Anyway, it's predominantly command line driven, um, but you have a menu that you can, personal menu that you can put macros on. Uh, it's a document, and uh, if you like icons, you can do icons too. They're just macros that have pictures. Uh, we're going to click on this flight simulator. This is an 8-core flight simulator. Up here at the top, you can see the CPU loads. Uh, it's 640 by 480 by 16 color resolution because it's hard uh, doing it's hard doing full screen 60 frame graphics without acceleration uh, anyway uh, the command line feeds into a C compiler actually it's C plus or a slight flavor of C anyway uh, it uh, compiles incrementally so uh, we're gonna do uh, actually the native type system is use zero for void uh, you can use the standard types if you want uh, I64 six, it's a 64 bit integer signed normally you don't uh, enter functions at the command line you, you put them in a file there's no difference between the command line and uh, source code uh, anyway uh, there's a slight difference but uh, we won't get into that. Now I I entered a uh, call to that function. It's outside. It's at the global scope outside the function, and uh, that gets executed immediately. Anyway, we just counted to ten. Now since it feeds into a C compiler, the way you uh, invoke a file or call a file is to uh, do an include. Uh, we need a semicolon because it doesn't know that it's done. There we got hello world. That was uh, a file hello that was just printf. Now we're gonna do uh, another one. Uh, this is just an alternative. Uh, it this is not quite the standard C C out from C plus plus. It's a slight vary. It's it's a special case in lose those. That's just handy. I'm just showing it because in case you see it, you'll wonder what it is. Anyway, it uses commas instead of uh, shift operators and uh, we're gonna do a number in it and that anyway you can right click on these links are active at the command line and uh, uh, so we just got uh, we just got hello world and then one two three four we're gonna do another example uh, we're gonna do a directory uh, this is stand this is C as you can see anyway Files ending in Z are compressed and uncompressed on the fly. Uh, so the next one we're going to look at is actually if you uh, if you it has uh, default parameters from C plus plus, and if you have no parameters, you can do no. You don't need the parentheses. Kind of like Pascal looks like Pascal, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, we're going to look at uh, this example. This turns on the compiler trace, uh, which will disassemble unassemble the uh, code that's as it's compiled and just to make it interesting we broke it up into a C out for hello a put s and then carriage turn line feed this is just a handy uh, uh, function it's a uh, it doesn't have parameters so there's no parentheses anyway uh, and then this is going to invoke that function and then invoke that function see it and then turn the compiler trace off you can see it's exactly what we what we've been doing so carriage turn is the same as right click now this is 64-bit disassembly it has source debugging so you can jump to the code with these links 64-bit assembly take a take note of this call uh, that's that's the uh, invocation that's that's where we did the the invocation outside the function then there's another one and, uh, and then there's a call to turn C trace off anyway uh, you don't have to know assembly but uh, 
if you're interested in recreational programming, there's a good chance you're interested in assembly. Uh, so uh, now we're going to do hello world from assembly. Uh, the standard is DB for define byte, but the native type system is uh, U8 is a uh, unsigned 8-bit, and it's a uh, for characters you do unsigned instead of signed because signed is kind of stupid, isn't it? Anyway, uh, uh, so this character turn line feed at the end, and it's got a zero terminator. Colon colon is a exported symbol. We have to preserve RSI, and then we uh, we we load RSI with the uh, message and call put string. This ampersand will import. Right now we're operating in just in just in time mode. Uh, when you when you compile binaries, it's a little different. Anyway, uh, then we we have a a call to to that exported symbol hello world. So uh, we're gonna run that. We got hello world. Now. If you want, you can hit F5 when you're in the editor to run a task. It spawns a task and or to run a program. It spawns a task and runs it. So we just did that. Uh, now we're going to include, uh, we have a factorial function. Uh, we're going to include that. And now we're going to go on our menu. I hit the Windows key to get to my menu. And we're going to make a macro. Uh, now up at the top is... Uh, um, these anyway, these red ones are links. These blue ones are macros. That you have, you can have trees as well at the command at the, all. The document structure uh, supports a lot of widgets. Uh, anyway, uh, so links, trees, colors. You can change colors, margins, and macros, and uh, even the uh, forms and dialog boxes use the same uh, uh, document structure. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna click on macro, and uh, we're gonna say factor factorial. Then the expression, we're gonna create a global variable i for i equals zero, i less than twenty-two, i plus plus. See outline i space factorial i. And then we need a carriage return at the end. So uh, now we can click on this, and we get the factorials up to 22. You can see it's 64-bit. Anyway, uh, now we're going to look at, uh, uh, oh, I want to show a couple miscellaneous features. Uh, there's a zoom that's system-wide that will zoom on the cursor. So you control alt z will zoom in on the cursor. Control Alt Shift C will zoom out. There's also a um, drag that uh, Control and then left drag will uh, will scroll. You can have scroll bars too. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, it's got scroll bars, but it's uh, the nice thing about these system-wide features is you don't have to add them to your applications. So uh, if you want uh, a scroll feature, this is done at the uh, graphics a uh, library function level anyway uh, no now we're going to take a tour of uh, uh, the the directory uh, the standard directory structure for loose those it's a uh, this is my personal version I have a few more lines it's 120,000 lines of code there's an accounts directory there's a uh, Adam, Adam's the father of all tasks. He's the first task, and he starts up running a script uh, like autoexec, and he compiles a bunch of code into his uh, heap and symbol table, and then other tasks can access him if they're children of Adam. Anyway, uh, so all this code gets compiled during boot, and then there's optional packages, which are also compiled, to, compiled during boot, and they're placed in memory. It only takes two seconds to compile 40,000 lines grep is an optional package uh they don't when you when you enter a command it runs from memory it doesn't it doesn't a operate like linux or or unix where it goes or dos and executes a file it doesn't do that there's no path either anyway uh so optional packages atom accounts then there's uh, applications and uh there's my compiler and uh it's, it's a compiler assembler unassembler 
Uh, then there's uh, the kernel, although it's everything runs in kernel mode, so it's nothing, it's nothing special. So the user programs run in ring zero kernel mode. Anyway, this is, uh, the compiler OS main and OS main two are uh, are compiled ahead of time. Everything else is just in time. OS main two is just sprintf. Anyway, uh, if you want to, uh, well, let's look at a quick. There's tons and tons of demos. Uh, we're going to look at. Uh, just to show an example, I said everything is seamlessly integrated. This is source code here with graphics in it and links and stuff, and the compiler understands it. Anyway, uh, so uh, now uh, let's uh, recompile everything that's done ahead of time. There's a uh, feature called WordStat, which will do autocompletes and it'll jump to source code. So we can do Control Shift F1, jump to the source code. So all the documentation is uh, pretty much right, right by the, uh, right by the code. Um, anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna. This is gonna compile everything that's compiled ahead of time, and it's gonna tell the boot sector where the, uh, the uh, block number for the kernel is. Uh, this configuration manager is flaky, but let's hope it works. Uh, we're going to use the current configuration for the kernel. Okay, it worked. Uh, what I do actually is uh, I have a key on my menu that uh, compiles everything. And if you want to see the code for that, uh, you can uh, you can go to. Uh, Anyway, uh, it's it's in actually, I have my personal files as an example on the distribution. I I load up my answers into the keyboard buffer so that they it does standard in. That's what this auto function does. Anyway, uh, here's the wallpaper underneath here, and uh, it's got um, this is eight cores, and uh, up, it's got the uh, the memory. Uh, it's a uh, I have a, a 12 gig machine and uh, actually the lowest 2 gig is for uh, the code heap uh, it separates code and data so that it can use 32 bit branches which are the uh, fastest they're faster than system calls anyway uh, um, this tells where the tasks are uh, where the task codes are sitting and uh, tells how many lines 40,000 lines is compiled during boot and 40,000 ahead of time and uh, let's just do uh, one last demo here. Uh, we're going to make a byte, byte pointer A. We're going to malloc 8 uh, gig. And uh, you can see uh, it just dropped that 2 in the leading 2. So that's 8 gig. It has to be a, it rounds up to a power of 2, and on 12 gig machine, the biggest I can allocate is 8 gig. Anyway, uh, we know we're going to set that to 0 just to show that it works. Every Everybody uses the same address space. It never messes with maps or page tables. Set it to 0, and then free. It's 64-bit. Uh, there's that issue with the bottom 2 gig for code, which is it's it is 64 bit but it it does have that issue anyway now now the memory's back up to uh 11 gig free anyway now uh why don't you send me an email if you want the full version the full version has a dictionary uh it's free anyway uh i'd really like some emails because i don't get any feedback and uh anyway uh watch the other videos on the site and uh have fun